Hello everybody, it's Buster Fay, Ayrshire Adventure Biker. So this is my first setup uh, with a GoPro. Uh, so I'm just going to uh, basically just talk absolute mints. I've got a one in the front of the bike facing me. Might be wobbling about quite a bit because it's on the the sun cover of the it's on the sun cover. So we're off to the Isle of Whitburn today. Uh, just for a wee run. I've just basically to test this camera. So I'm just going to talk probably absolute minsties all the way there and all the way back just test out the the cameras and stuff I'm more happy with the one that's on the on the dash it's bouncing about like mad so Lila Whithorn it's down in Dumfries and Galloway and you used to be able to get a ferry uh, a ferry from uh, this road's a pain in the backside the road back there's shut so if I had to come through the wee village so yeah as we've seen uh, the the Isle of Whithorn. It used to be uh, just trying to sort out my camera, hopefully I can get the, the levels right for talking. So the Isle of Whithorn it used to be used to be like a ferry from Scotland to the Isle of Man. I don't know when they stopped it. Uh, I never knew of the place, I just went out for a run one day on my bike. And uh, and found it. So yeah, it's a nice wee fishing village. Uh, said used to do the, the ferry. I don't know how big the ferry was. If it was a just a passenger ferry, I don't know. It's a nice wee village. So I'll show you the sights on the way down. It's quite windy today. Uh, I'm going to go the kind of straight route there. And then on the way back, I think I'm going to go up over the forestry. So, I've, uh, this is quite new to me, this uh, motor vlogging. just to get prepared for when me and my brother go to Budapest because the last time the last time we went to Bud we went to Luxembourg we never took a lot of photos and we never took any video or so with this big trip coming up seven days for me five days for my brother because it's so long that's, that's seven days for me there and seven days back so I've never been outside well, riding anyway I've never been outside Germany so This is going to be a regular thing, I think. When my son was asking me about doing the YouTube channel and stuff, uh, and I'm explaining how I started doing the YouTube channel. 
so him being 10 I think you can make it rich on YouTube uh, I'm not interested in making money off YouTube but if, if I do, I do it's no it's no why I'm doing it it's no my sole purpose I've got a full time job I like my job uh, would I like to ride bikes for a living? of course I would <laughs> if you ask any biker if that's what you would like to do I'm quite concerned because my, my camera my wee camera on my dashboard doesn't lighten up so I don't know if it's recording so it's not a big deal of, of, so as, long as, as long as this one's recording that's the main thing I'm really bored with that one, I'll sort that one out I will do. Aye, so as I was saying, if you ask any biker proper biker if you could if you could do if you could ride a bike for a job and get paid to it paid to do it, then yeah if any biker says they wouldn't do that then they're not really a biker my, <laughs> I'm a, sorry, it's not really a biker I'd love to ride bikes for a living uh, I've looked into it, I've looked into being a, a motorcycle instructor but one, it doesn't, it doesn't pay very well uh, not as an individual doing it because you're technically self-employed uh, it's not really maybe Maybe later down the line, when my son's uh, my son's too old to be hanging about with his father, then maybe I'll maybe do it the weekends or something. Maybe just uh, just for something to do. I like to keep active. That's why I don't really like the winter. The winters for me are absolutely diabolical. Cause you can't do anything. You can't get your bike. Especially in Scotland, now, this is this is the third day we've had that's been okay since before Christmas. It's been raining. It feels like it's been raining non-stop, absolutely non-stop. Uh, so we better get a really good, better get a really good uh, summer. So yeah, it's. This will be, it's been interesting. I've, so this is the last, the last week. I bought two cameras. And I don't know if that one's on because I can't see the red light flashing so I don't know if it's recording or not. Uh, the am not too bored about that one just now. It's more so this one. This is the old, old one. There's a nice wee, uh, there wouldn't be me doing that on this road. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. So sat nav and roots and stuff. So I use I use three apps. Well, technical one's not an app. So I use Google Maps. Google Maps if, if I'm going, I know exactly where I'm like, I know where I want to go, and I don't want to take day tours or anything like that, I just want to go. Uh, so that's my, my, my main basic one's Google Maps. So off the back of Luxembourg trip, my brother were kind of talking about apps and stuff so he, he put me onto one called My Roots I think that's what it's called My Roots uh, it's a subscription based uh, app but it does some good things like it has got a navigation uh, if there's 
roads closed, stuff like that, there was somebody else shooting. It used to be, it's, it's very similar to Navi me. Go for everybody who knows Navi me. When the smartphones first came out, uh, there was an app called Navi me you could download and you could see if other people were using it, you could share what you were doing. So it's very similar to that. Uh, so you could, you could navigate with it, you could route plan with it. So you can actually plan your own route with this app. It's very hard to do on the on the, the phone. It's doable, but it's, it's it's very hard to do on the phone. And also what it does is it does a thing called track log. So I don't have to do this one because I've done this route and done it on uh, the track log on the app. My route might slightly change today because depending on how I feel and what we are going and stuff like that. So yeah, so you can track your logs, so you just open the app up in the background, uh, click the record, and then you just need to put it away and put usually either your own sat nav or if you use Google Maps or, or the other one I use is Tom Tom Go. And this came about for this luxury bug trip as well. So my brother had a sat nav, he had, he had a motorcycle sat nav. And he was telling me what it does, you can, you can uh, do round trips. That uh, route map does it as well. You can do like set a round trip for your destination, for, for where you start, where you are, to back to where you're, you're starting from basically. Like a, a, yeah, it's like a round trip, you can do it from how many miles you want to do. He was telling me that, and then we were just sitting in a hotel one night in uh, Baden, Luxembourg. And I remembered I used to have a sat nav, and obviously you don't have an account and stuff like that. Uh, so I downloaded it onto my phone, and now I've got it on my phone. And after the back of that again, I think what my brother's done, because uh, I don't know if you notice, I've got the ultimate add ons phone case. So, when I bought the ultimate add-on phone case, I had an iPhone 14 Pro uh, Max. Aye, uh, iPhone 14 Pro Max, I think that's what it's called. And ultimate add-ons didn't do the case for it at the time. Uh, so I got just, there's a universal one that can do it. There's everything that's kind of, you just need to basically measure the size of your phone. And, uh, yeah, you just get the, you just get the, the case to suit. So, I'd, I'd got that, and then, I, I think it was about a week later, no, I think, I think it was actually the same week, uh, the, I came up with a website, the 14 Pro Max, so I'm getting another one. So I am giving my brother uh, my full setup, pretty much something like that, except because he's got a smart, just a normal smartphone on Android. Uh, it works for his, so he's got that now. So because I downloaded the motorcycle Tom Tom on my phone, I think he's did that. I don't know if he's sold his Tom Tom or not, I'm not too sure. The reason why I do it is uh, because I can bring I can bring my sat nav up any app I've got on my phone. I can bring it up on my TFT screen. But you've got a slight issue with that is you, you can't see. Uh, doesn't give you that small screen at the bottom. Doesn't give you as much information. I mean, that only gives you speed. What gear you're in and how many miles you've done. That's it. Whereas the TFT screen gives you uh, engine braking, stuff like that. You can see if your ABS is on, stuff like that. Plus, what I found was, was that do take this off road and can have roads and stuff. So if you've got it coming through your TFT screen, You have to come off your come off your sat nav. Stop, sorry, stop. Come off your sat nav, 
and then change it from tour mode to gravel or off-road mode or whatever mode you want and then put your sat nav back on but it's doing it the way I'm doing it but I've got my phone as my sat nav and then you can do it in the fly just use the buttons and you can actually do it while you're riding you can change the tour mode into gravel mode I'll stop. There's a road down here, down at the uh, Fishing Gallery, called, uh, I'm sure it's called Buccaneer Pass, which is part of the forestry. And this is where I realised that I had to do it this way, is because when I've come off with a road like this and on the Buccaneer's Pass, which is a gravel road, when I've came off, it's on a hill, it's gravel and the bike the bike ABS was kicking in so it was yeah, so I thought no, I don't want to do that, I want to, I want to basically if I'm running off this road I want to go right on a gravel road. Before I even get to the gravel road I'll flick it to gravel and then go straight from this road on the gravel. So that's why I do it this way. So I think my brother now, I think he runs, he runs it, he's not got a TFT screen on his uh, bike, but I think he, he's, get, I'm not too sure if he's getting rid of his, his uh, Tom Tom. Uh, there's a guy with a, a guitar on his back, bike. So I don't know if he's getting into his Tom Tom or not. Uh, and he just uses his phone for everything, so I, have, I, use, my, I use my iPhone for everything. Absolutely. Emails. Because I've been spending the last couple of days obviously getting, getting the GoPros and uh, stuff like that. I've been looking at the uh, video game, editing the excuse me, Scottish accent and my, my slang. And I've, I've found a I've got a Baxter on my back, my, my bike as well, if you've seen my previous videos, the reason why that is, is because the week before Christmas when the weather was really really bad, uh, my bike my bike got blown over, and it's now got a nice big dent in the tank. This is, uh, I hate this road. Just go this way. This is probably one of the worst roundabouts in Yersha. Oh, big man's gets to might have something wrong with his bike. 24 plate, Kamazaki. This is where this is where somebody gets knocked after a bike. Would you I was gonna swear there. I need to remember that I've got the camera on and you can hear me. You just, you just don't care. There's no... I've noticed that way uh, over the last few years. There's no cut to say anymore, there's no... I mean, I remember years ago when I started riding bikes. If you, if you were coming down a slip road onto the motorway, the car in the inside lane would move out and let you out. But see now, you just don't, you just don't bother. 
and they don't speed up, they don't slow down. It tends to be people who are going under the speed limit, don't they do it? It's, it's crazy. So then you're having to keep putting that slip mode, which is slip mode. There may be, you, that's to be used, and obviously these are bike riders, you know, that's maybe used to get to speed to join the flow traffic. But if you're coming down there, and there's somebody in that inside lane doing 50 mile an hour or 70, you're having to brake to get behind them because they're, they're basically past the junctions you're meant to be coming on. It's just, there's no courtesy anymore, there's no, everybody's just out for themselves. And it's, it's disappointing. It is very disappointing. Bikeway thing, I'm just going to sell on a tangent here. This is like bikeway thing. Hardly anybody waves at you anymore when you're riding a bike and you're, you're passing them. Years ago, you would pass any biker, you'd wave at them. If there's a biker stopped at the side of the road in a, uh, in a lay by or anything like that, you'd beat your horn and give him a wave, give him a thumbs up, just to check, see if he's okay. And, if he was there, then you would you would go back and give him a hand. So like that idiot there, look. Honest to God, this is another reason why I wanted the GoPro as well. Because people just don't just don't see. You. But anyway. I can play this back and it's a bit tedious, this bit of me talking. I'll just cut it out and put some music in. <laughs> so yeah. That's over there to the right. That's air. That's air. That's the town here. Yeah, that's where uh, yeah, that's where everybody used to go in the summer for days out and stuff like that in the beach. Very played out now, it's no it's not the same. So yeah. So this road we go down to now. My sat nav tell me I can go left here. Uh, I'm just gonna go the straightest route the way there and then I'm gonna use uh, Tom Tom go up to basically plan my route back. I think I'm going to go for where I am, Newton Stewart, up over the forestry. Yeah, because that would be a nice road to show you. And what is it, what is it with people indicators these days? Either they don't use them or they use them wrong. I don't understand it. Look, this, this idiot in front of me. It's terrible. This is a 60. Yeah, so as I say, this road here, this is the road you take to get the, the ferry to Belfast for Cairn Line. Yeah. It's quite a good road. I don't know if we're going, I don't think we're going as far down as Strunra. What's wrong with people? Try to scratch my nose, put it top of my camera. So yeah, funny games. I need to remember not to swear while I'm riding. So, I'm 
been riding for, I think, 28 years. I had my motorcycle license before my car license. I've only had my car license for... Uh, Seven, so 20, 27 I passed my car test and then before that it was my bike test and I did that when I was 17 in the army uh, they, they changed it all in the army I speak to people who have been in the armed forces they, they changed it all when, when I joined up just sort of get rid of the juniors uh, so when you join up you basically have your provisional license, you give it to the army and basically just put you through licenses. Yeah. I think it, but they came to me, they asked me and I said, oh, I want my more big license. And then got my more big license. By the time I did that, then I ended up getting medically discharged because of my knee. So I only had my more big license. And it was quite funny because it was about the time where uh, the tests were just coming in. I think, maybe. It was 97 when I did mine. I think maybe the tests had been in for a, good, a couple of years before that. But the strange thing is, at the time, the army were exempt from doing the tests. So you didn't have forces doing your test. You didn't have to do a three test. It was literally like the old. I remember my brother telling me when he passed his, his car test, the way they'd done it. Basically, looked, looked at a few cards and then he told them what the signs meant and uh, took you around the square a couple of times and then that was it. He passed his test on the back. I don't remember my older brother passed his test. It was uh, a whale logo. But anyway. That's the way it was when I passed my bike test. I was in the parade square. Uh, the bike guy came out, the bike instructor came out. I'd obviously been riding a few bikes between then. Uh, got me out on the parade square bike. It was an old, uh, an MT350, which sometimes were badged as Harley Davidson. But it was basically, a, the, Halliday, the Army Harley Davidson, the British Army, was actually an MT. It was a company, I think. I think in Bristol. I'm going to say, maybe, Bristol. It was a English company, anyway. Yeah. That's a funny story, that. Well, the story that I get told about it. But so, yeah, so it was an MT 350. I said some of them were badged Harley Davidson's, but weren't they Harley Davidson's? Uh, yeah, took me in the parade square, got me to do a couple of corners, U-turn, uh, slalom, stuff like that. Stopped, pulled out a book, showed me a few uh, road signs, and went, I'll show you you've passed. And that was how I got my, my uh, bike licence. But then another, I'll tell you another strange story. <laughs> Well, well, uh, riding along here, little bit So about, must have been about 2013. I uh, had moved house and sent my driving license away to change the address. And it came back. That's the road we would, we're going to go down. We'll come back. Yeah, so as I'm saying, sorry, I'm getting distracted here. So, yeah, 2013, sent my license away to get uh, changed, changed address. They came back with no motorcycle license on it. So, phone DVLA, said to them, where's my bike license? Oh, we've got no, we've got no record of you ever passing your test. I mean, you, you serious? Yeah, we just we have no record of it. So, 
I'm still friends with my old CEO. And uh, he's still in the he's still in the armed forces actually. Uh, to him, said to him, do you, know, do you remember me getting stopped a week ago? Yeah, I remember. This is, did I have a licence you went, yeah? He said, you're in the alert to see if you stopped me. I had a licence you went, yeah? He gave me a little alert to so I've got the alert to the CEO, the alert police officer who stopped me and sent him to the DVLA. cheaper doing your license again. But it doesn't stop there. <laughs> this story doesn't stop there. So I thought, right, fine. So we went, went through all the full rigmarole. Booked, booked my theory test. Uh, done my theory test, passed that. Went for my CBT. Passed that. Uh, took three lessons. I, did, I had to do a mandatory first lesson on a 125. But basically, the, the, the gentleman who took me out just went, I nah, just go to me, just you follow us. Uh, on a lesson, I did one lesson on a 125, did two lessons on a six, an SV 650. Went for my mod 1, passed it, went for my mod 2, passed that in the space of probably a week. So, this is where the story doesn't doesn't end. So, passes all that, sends my license away to get my endorsement onto my license for riding motorcycles. And it came back, we were on it, but the date was 1997. So I don't know what happened. Don't know what happened. So the date had they changed on my license. It came back with uh, me passing my motorcycle license in 1997. So I've never questioned them, <laughs> just in case. What is this Egypt doing? Honest to God, this is the sort of shit I talk about. Get back me. My bike license, 1997. I've never questioned it. Uh, I've also moved house since then, sent it away. No issues. Still comes back. Passed my passed my motorcycle test in 1997.
game should not be. I will probably cut most of this stuff out. Scotland are absolutely terrible. Obviously that in the rest of the UK are, but the roads here are absolutely terrible. I know guys that have buckled their wheels and everything just on the road, not even going off road, on the actual road, but buckled their front wheels. I think that's why the new Africa Twins get a 19 inch front wheel. Because obviously the bigger the diameter, the more chance it is to, to buckle. But I'm going to have to put up with this all the way to the Isle of Hunt. This is going to be fun. I don't know if that front camera is actually working, uh, actually on. I don't know. I've got it plugged into my Sigma, or call it a uh, cigarette lighter, but that's not what it is. But yeah, I don't know if it's on. It was, it was actually, it, turned, it powered on, but I don't know if it's recording. The thing is, is this, this new, uh, this editing app I've got, I can actually take, I can, t I can take this, the, the talking bit out. This, this road's always busy because this is the this is the road to Stranra to get the ferry to uh, Belfast. So you're always going to get trucks and stuff like that on this road. But the way they sometimes the way they drive just. I've not got any time on it. So as long as if I need to go through here and go straight back, I've got no time on it. So I'll just go down here. I've got a bottle of water with me. Yeah. And just start working my way back. That's my plan is just to get down here and then do most of the travel and like seeing different stuff on the way back. Because I I'll actually stop the camera when I get there. Probably change the battery over. Just do one and just maybe I'll talk. I'll be back. Unless I see something interesting. Yeah. 
you get that in Scotland as well, which is a bit. This is this is when you start getting camper vans on the road. The majority of roads in Scotland are like this. So they're, they're like this. What time you get kind of main motorway parts is uh, through city centre of Glasgow and Edinburgh and stuff. Then, but even some of even some of them they made just a just a two lane motorway. And then the one got the from Perth to Dundee, that's a two two lane motorway as well. We're going the other way to Inverness, that's only that's like this, this is only uh, a single lane motorway. I don't know if that's the right terminology for that, I would class this as a, uh, a single lane road. No, I wouldn't ask, no, no, is it? No. Yeah, so it's mere. So the motorways in Scotland are more like dual carriageways. This is a single carriageway. So yeah, yeah, that's the terminology I'm looking for. So yeah, it's fun and games. If you get a truck in front of you like this we've got up here, then this is going to be all the way to should not probably unless I can get around them. But then new drivers these days don't read the highway code and know the bikers can actually filter and overtake and stuff like that. All that will happen is I know exactly what's gonna happen. We're gonna to get to the bit when it opens up to two lanes on this side and somebody's gonna pull out like that green truck, that drumming truck is gonna pull out and he's going to take forever to pass the other truck and hold up the full, the full load of traffic. Guaranteed, that's what's going to happen. That's Tumbray over there. That's uh, that's owned by Donald Trump. That's Tumbrey Golf Course. Also, what's happening here as well is the car, the car, so there's this big truck, I think, the looks of it, he's got skips on his back. That might have been my brother's just driven past us. <laughs> Uh, my brother's just my brother, was my brother actually in the second truck there. My other brother, not the one I'm going to handle, but eh, uh, the person. Yep, so, what's happening is, is, he's got that on the back of his truck, he's got an escort vehicle behind him, and the cars behind him are driving up to the back of the van, and the van's having to stop, or slow down, and then they're having to slow down, and obviously it's just a stagger effect, that's exactly what's happening here. That's why it looks like I'm speeding up, slowing down, speeding up, slowing down. But yeah, what gets me as well is that truck. That truck driver that I just passed, that drumming truck, he's on his phone. He's on his phone, driving a 17 and a half tonner. 
in traffic. See, look, that, that Land Rover is just, he's going right up the back of that truck, that van's rear end, and then slamming on the anchors. So he's not giving me enough space to get between him and the white van, and then enough space to get out to, to take over everybody. Exactly what he was doing there, he was going all the way up to that van. There's no even enough space between him and the van. So when the van's breaking, he's having to break, and it's obviously just a stagger effect. If he had enough space between him, which I would do if I was driving a car or a van, I would leave enough space that if a biker came up, the biker could get in and in between the van and then overtake because it's, it's obviously harder for a bike, especially in wind like this, to overtake three or four cars at one time. Easy to take over one or two cars. That guy is driving that Land Rover has just been an absolute language, an absolute knob. So I may just keep that in and show you about the sort of stuff you need to put up with when you're riding a bike in Scotland. Somebody who's selfish. I'm going to go, I'm going to chat, I'm probably going to delete this out because that's somebody who's selfish. What's the difference with him back car lengths or like two car lengths? He's just chatting at a bit, trying to, try to get as far on as he can. And just causing absolute fucking mayhem for everybody else. I wave at everybody, see anybody with two wheels? I wave at everybody. I never used to. I used to be quite, oh, I'm not going to wave at anybody unless it's a motorbike and stuff like that, but times have changed, you don't know the situation. The person might not be able to afford a motorbike or you know, a scooter because it's all that, it's the only thing you can afford and stuff like that. So I wave at everybody with two wheels now. Everybody. I'm more, I'm more, more a bike snob. I don't just wave at Honda Africa Twins either. I wave at anybody, an adventure bike, sports bike, anything, I wave them all. It's to get two wheels to get, to get a wave for me. I even wave, even wave at BMW riders. Tell you a story about when I was uh, on. Get, I was getting the ferry back, so I didn't even beat to Luxembourg with my brother and stuff, and we'd done a trip and stuff. That was on my way back. So I'd left Arnhem at six o'clock in the morning. I was getting the first ferry out, and it was not first ferry, but early ferry, and then I basically drove off a road all the way home. It took me 14 and a half hours. So I was at a, this, this bike was rel relatively new then. Yeah. Like this, this model was relatively new. Because even though this is, this is a, uh, this registered as a 20, uh, 2022, but it's the same body shape as a 2023. Still a wank. <laughs> fucking load right up a hole here, the fucking fanny. Excuse the language. Yeah, so. I'm starting again because I probably ate head of that bit out because he came right up my fucking ringer there. So. Yeah, so I was getting the ferry. <laughs> I've left Arlem at 6 o'clock in the morning. 
and uh, I got to the ferry I think maybe at 10 o'clock and uh, so I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there, I've already been through passport control stuff. I'm sitting waiting, well, I'm in the lane waiting to go on. So a big, a big line of bikers turned up after me. He's still all sitting behind me. And one of them was really nice, he had an old Triumph ST. Uh, that was a really nice bike actually. Uh, what is he, what are you doing? That was a really nice bike. He was really nice, but a couple of his, a couple of his pals had uh, BMW XRs and stuff like that, and GSs. So they've all came up to say, they said this was a relatively new bike, even though this is a, a this registered as a 2022. Because uh, it's an ex-demonstration bike, it's actually a, it's actually a 2023. Wait, what are you doing? Seriously, people like that shouldn't be able to drive. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, it's actually a twenty. It's registered as a twenty twenty two, but it's actually a twenty twenty three model. Because uh, it's a demonstrator, they've had to obviously register it and stuff like that. So, yeah, so stopped. So they've all came to speak to me. Back, man. Yeah, so they've all, they've all came and spoke to me. They're you know, asking about the bike and stuff. Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a 2022 and the looks. I explained it, it's a, it's, a, it's a 2023 model but registers a 22 because it's a demonstrator. Right, okay then. So the BMW bikers came up and stuff like that and he's, oh, he's, 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 <laughs> they're all going on and on and on about their BMWs, right? How their BMWs are the best and it's the best adventure bike you can buy and all that sort of stuff. It's not that I don't like. It's not that I don't like BMWs. I do like. I do like them. Get that? I do. Uh, I do like BMWs. Nice bikes. They're just no my type of bike. So yeah, so he's looking on on about the bikes. Ah, this is the best bike and stuff like that. Yeah, one of them. So I think. I think there was six of them all in. So one had the, the Triumph SD, really nice guy. I actually spoke to him more than I spoke to the rest of them. Uh, really nice guy. Really nice guy, brilliant. Uh, four of them had BMW XRs. They were kind of alright, but this one guy, this one guy that had a BMW GS, oh, he was, he was properly doing my noodling. Because he was going on and on about, oh, you should have went for the GS, you should have did this, you should have did that, the GS is better, it's much better bike, it's shaft driven, it's this, it's that, it's this and that. And I was trying to be nice to him. I said to him, look, since I've been riding bikes, I've always had a Honda, always. This Honda's my favourite bike, and if I didn't, I couldn't get a Honda, I would get a Suzuki. I said, I've always liked the Africa Twin. Since they first came out in the 80s, ladies, I've always liked the Africa Twin, just like the look of them. And then they stopped making them in uh, 2002. 
and then they brought them back out 2017 most years ago on the on the actual paperwork it's 2016 but they didn't come out in the uh, UK 2017 and then obviously they've upped them to 1100 and stuff so I'm, I'm saying that to myself, I've always liked Honda, I've always wanted an Africa twin this is, and, and now that I can afford one I bought one oh no you should have went for the you should have went for the GS1250 that's a much better bike I went, have you rode a, have you rode a, a Honda Africa? Is that no? Says, well, how do you know? How do you know it's a better bike? Oh, it's just a BMW, much better. Says, that's no, that's no how it works. Yeah, no, no, the Honda, the BMW is a much better bike. Um, so I, I kept going. I was saying, look, when I was when I was going for a new bike. I knew I wanted I knew I wanted an Africa twin so I purposely test drove this last because I think if I, I test, drove, test drove this first I forgot how fucking twisted this road is uh, if I test drove this first I wouldn't have even test drove the rest of the bike and I didn't want to give them I didn't want to be unfair to them. So I test drove, I test drove road, sorry, road drove, test road a few bikes. And BMW GS 1250 was one of them. And then, so I, I, I had a comparison when I went to this and I loved this. One is a Honda, two is an African one. So yeah, so it was going on and on and on about this BMW, BMW, BMW. I went, okay, okay, okay. And even the guy that was uh, riding the, the Triumph, uh, the Triumph ST, uh, was saying to me, oh, he's been like that the whole the whole week we've been away. <laughs> He's been at, he's, he's, he's even he's seen to the guys with the XRs Oh you should get a GS, you should get a GS So He went away and I thought that was the end of it I still talk to the big guy, the big guy with the, the Triumph I think it was a Triumph Trophy ST I think An older one and it was nice, nice, nice games like For an old bike it was in really good condition so we've all we've all got on the, the ferry and stuff. And uh, we've all got on the ferry and stuff. And I've went I always now go on a ferry, regardless of how long it is. I always go straight to the straight to the cafe, straight to the canteen or whatever it is and get something deep. As soon as I go on. So I've went, got myself something to eat, sat down, ate my thing, it was fish and chips, and they've all, they've all appeared next to me on a table. And he's, he's going on and on about this GS. As I said, I do not have anything against GSs, it's just no my type of bike, but. You've got a certain GS rider. A certain GS rider that has all the gear, boots, helmet, all BMW motor stuff, big BMW. What is this tool Dane man? Uh, and this was this type of rider. Older guy, I think he's maybe in his 60s or something. Uh, and he's going to be this BMW and I've said to the boy with the I've said to the guy with the Triumph watch this so we've all finished our dinners and stuff meals and stuff like that I've got a coffee he's got a coffee he's going on the whole way from the table up to the bar to get a coffee going on a bit of get to the bar and I've said to him Right, listen. I said, you ever heard the expression? BMW GSs are like hedgehogs. 
And they went, no. Why are they like hedgehogs? I said, because you always find a prick and tappy one in them. And everybody, everybody, burst out laughing at this guy. And he never spoke about his GS1250 again. <laughs> well, not me anyway. I said, I've had this conversation with, with loads of people. Loads of people. A bike's a tool. It's a tool. And it is what you want it today. It's like the joiner. A joiner's got his favourite heart. I make a hammer that he always buys or his uh, make a power tools that he always because that's the one he feels comfortable using. Bikes are the same. Bikes are the same. Don't buy a bike because somebody else has got one. Or a model of a bike that somebody else has got. If you like an Africa Twin, you buy an Africa Twin. If you like a GS1250 or 1300, you buy a GS1300. At the end of the day, that's it. It's your choice, but just be comfortable on it. That's all you need to do. Not you think I'm an alright rider with the way I've been riding these roads, but I think it's because I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get used to talking and riding at the same time. Yeah. If they made, if they made the Africa Twin back to being a 750, I'd have bought it if it was a 750. I didn't buy it. There's people that I know that buy bikes because of the size of the engine. And it's just... You, you just... You just can't buy a bike like that. I mean, Matt, I'm thinking about when I come back for Budapest from my PD Gipston room, I can feel my palms getting sweaty. When I come back for uh, Budapest, I'm thinking about buying a, a, a Yamaha Tenerife. And the reason why I'm thinking about that I won't, I won't get into this, this will be my touring bike on touring but it's going to cross to Budapest again or or whatever longer journeys I'll take my son on because it's a nice big bike doing me fuel hum on the back of this but uh, why I'm thinking about buying the Yamaha Tenere is because my other two mates, my two friends they're bikers as well they're not hardcore bikers but they want to get a couple of Tenerys and they want to get a... Uh, they want to go to Luxembourg and I think a Tenere 700 would be ideal for Luxembourg I mean I did it in this it was fine but because it's a big bike I think the lighter, the lighter bike would be a lot, a lot more fun. But that's just, I just, so I th that's why I'm buying a 10 of the year after, after I come back from Budapest. Because I think the plan is, when I come back from Budapest, that'll be it, that'll be my, my kind of summer over. Or, oh, my bike, my proper bike trips over. But obviously about the bike and like after it, but that'll be like a proper trips. And then next year, I think my, my mates were talking about uh, my mates were talking about getting ten of these and going to Luxembourg in May next year, just for a weekend. So, if they do that, I think I might buy myself a Tenere, put it through its paces in Luxembourg, and then, if I don't like it, then I'll sell it, but I've got a funny feeling that I probably will. This road is absolutely terrible, man, it's got adverse camera on it.
place that's oh, it's a public in the house. So this is roads that, that, that these roads that I'm going down to do are roads that you wouldn't do if you're on the NC500. I really need to stop talking and start concentrating on what I'm doing. This time of year in Scotland, you need to take what days you get. Because when it, it's, it's been, as I say, the weather's been absolutely bucking it down since before Christmas. So, I was out on my birthday, which was the 24th of March, which was a Sunday. Lucky enough, it was okay. And then I was out on in the bank holiday weekend. Which would be three weeks ago. So I was out then, 